see the ladies by the tight dress and posing. All them better selling food and drinks, if you hear music playing. Somewhere near a big door where you could hear a woman calling. Take a taste, take a taste. Good evening. Thank you for joining me. It's a pleasure once again to be chatting with you on politics. The countdown is on in our nation where once again the PNC will be an illegal government. The PNC-led government will be an illegal government come September 18. You know, the PNC in history from 1968 to 1992 was an illegal government. They were brought into power with rigged elections. We all know that, it's all agreed, it's, it's validated uh, with factual data that the PNC-led government from 1968 to 1992 was illegal. The current PNC-led government, APTU, will become illegal on September 18th. And it's going into uncharted waters as we look what will happen come that date. We're getting very close to the countdown and very, Interestingly enough, that they have refused in all categories to come to grips with the fact that they will become illegal on September 18th. You know, here's a, a Mr. Granger that was elected with few thousand votes more than the opposition party, which as one block got over 201,000 votes and the PNC-led APNU government got 207, I believe it was, with a bundle of, of combination of parties, yet the PVP as a single party got the most vote as a single party. They won by a mere simple thousands of votes, yet they continue to disobey the law of our land, the Supreme Constitution that says election must be held within the time frame. As you deconstruct Mr. Granger, Mr. Granger, here's a man that I said, what election by a mere couple thousand votes, if so, if it was recounted, we're not sure that he would have really won. But the fact as you deconstruct this man, he has gone back to the 1970s, which is all he knows. He's stuck in a rigged election. He's stuck in a mole. You know, today at the ceremony for former... President Burnham on his death anniversary, the 34th anniversary. Mr. Granger praised Mr. Burnham for his view on education. Yet Mr. Granger, as you deconstruct him to see who he really is, raised the UG fees, raised, put VAT on private education. This is a man that praised Mr. Burnham today for his vision of education, but yet couldn't even live up to whatever he thought Mr. Burnham vision was in education. So a man in the 1970s parading around in the 21st century, totally lost. You deconstruct him, he's now holding on to power. As I said, the, the PNC government from 1968 to 1992 was an illegal government because they did not win the votes without rigging the elections. Mr. Granger is sitting in power where he should have been out eight months ago since the no confidence vote. And someone is saying to the opposition that they should be considerate. Please go to parliament and extend the life of Mr. Granger and his government. Absolutely not. The PPP at, uh, political party has said through the opposition leader, Dr. Jack Dill, absolutely not. You had eight months what is considerate for us now to allow you more months in government? It's an illegal act. One, you have shown no good faith. You have made our country embarrassed around the world. You have, you have put our judiciary system at risk. You put democracy at risk, Mr. Granger. If we just deconstruct you, you are just a man stuck in the 70s, stuck with your idol, praising him for things that he did not achieve and things that you can't even come close to trying to achieve. And then your Attorney General today made 
or yesterday made a very profound statement, a very dangerous statement. And I want to put that up on the screen for you to read. The one of the most dangerous statement that an attorney general can make. And if the operator has that, hear what Mr. Williams said. They are willing to go to the election with any house list, speaking maybe of a GCOM. They are ready for their properties and all those things to be subjected to those same post-election type of violence that we had in the past. He continued, I don't want to say, well, yeah, I'll go to the election because the consequences would be dire. Here's a threat. Threat. Look at it again. By Mr. Williams, the Attorney General of Orlando, the one that is advising Mr. Granger how to, be, to make himself illegal as of September 18th, threatening the nation that the fact that the consequences for going to election with a list that Mr. Lowingfield and the legal officer GCOM said is a valid list, this is what he's doing, threatening us with violence. And that's something all of us need to be cognizant of as we go forward over the next couple of weeks. Mr. Williams needs to be really being thrown out of office. Should I mean, the, the government has resigned. I mean, based on the, the CCJ, the government has resigned. But Mr. Williams now is threatening our country for violence. And this is something that we've got to be prepared for as we move forward. So as we move on, Mr. Granger, in deconstructing the man that is holding on to power, eight months into the no-confidence vote, we have seen all of the issues with the immigrants coming into the country, disappearing around our land. No one knows where they're at. No one knows what's going on with the house-to-house -house registration. One day we see 20,000 registered. The next day we see 70,000 registered. The next day 100,000 registered. None of us know what's going on with what GCOM is doing. And I hope Justice Collins Singh will put an end to that. The courts again is reviewing what they should not be re reviewing because the CCJ was very clear in, in determining the consequential orders that the election must be held within the, the 90 days from June 18. So we're in a whole load of mess, very uncharted waters that Mr. Ram Karan, the former speaker said yesterday at, at a seminar. The fact that we are moving into waters that is affecting our economy, significantly affecting our economy. Today I found some numbers that I want to just show you to these alarming numbers that brings into focus what is happening around us as we go into this illegal category as a government. Public debt has gone up. The public deposit at the Bank of Guyana went from 10 billion cash plus in 2015 in real cash to an overdraft today of 55 billion dollars so we're in the red imagine coming in 2015 having 10 billion dollars in real cash and now four years later you're 55 billion dollars in the red then you look at the stock of gold was sold and dropped from 25 billion to under 1 billion today. The nation has lost over 30,000 jobs. We know that across the country, from mining to sugar to rice to the construction sector, jobs have been lost. We, have, we know for a fact over 200 new taxes were instituted in the last four years. And then worse off, the foreign reserves, which was $665.8 million in 2015, U.S. has lost over 200 million U.S. in the last four years. These are some significant, very, very alarming numbers coming out of the Bank of Guyana. And we've got to pay very attention because the economy is going into recession. Regardless of the future of oil, regardless of the fact that we're going to see increase in, in revenues over the next five years, the fact is we're going to be so much in debt when this illegal government comes out of office that it will take another powerhouse of a team to bring it back together. So Mr. Granger, it is time. It is time for you to go. It is absolutely time for you to go. You have ruined our economy. You have disobeyed the supreme law of our land. 
Your attorney general is threatening the nation with violence. That was a press release quote from, from the PVP party today. And the numbers out of the Bank of Guyana tells a different story about where our economy is going, where it's at today, why many of us are struggling to pay our bills, why many of us are punishing from the taxes that were instituted. And you know, one of the funny, funny things that happened this week, the PVP released part of their manifesto that said that they will take off all taxes from the interior flights on goods and passengers that goes to the interior. And within days of that, that the PNC led Abdu read that part of the manifesto and then Mr. Granger came out and said he is taking those taxes off. Imagine if they have not done anything from 2015 to 2019, no new initiatives, and now that the PVP is starting to release their manifesto, in part, they're rushing to show that they can do it. Well, you know what, those 200 plus taxes, Mr. Granger, that you've put on the nation, you know, we will be all be happy if you will reverse it before the election. It wouldn't give you any, any bonus points. The fact that the PVP will reverse all those 200 plus taxes you have put on, on the nation. So you can continue to read our manifesto. You can continue to rush to try to implement it. You know, you're traveling around the country illegally with state funds. That is something that you should not be using in a campaign mode. And, you know, no matter how much you come to the communities now, Mr. Granger and your team, they have known that you did not show up there in the last four years. They know you have taken the increase in salaries in the first month of operation. They know you raise their taxes within the first month. They know that you cut 7,000 sugar workers out of work. And now you're saying that the diversification and the restructuring of the sugar industry that you thought you would be able to do with a $30 billion bond is that you need more time to figure it out. But Mr. Granger, four years of people out of work, families out of work, the downstream industries that are affected by that economic uh, that bad economic decision that you've made, now to tell the nation you have not been able to figure out how to restructure the sugar industry. Well, good thing that the PUP party has outlined in their pre-manifesto what they will do for the sugar industry. They will put back the sugar industry in place to ensure that all the workers get back work. They will look at their diversification process they will look at expanding our, our other industries, and as Ms. Ali outlined in, in many initiatives that he has presented to the nation. So Mr. Granger, no matter what you do, we have deconstruct you. We have, as in the last program I said, stripped you of the emperor clothes. You are holding on to power as your idol did in the 1970s, where thousands and thousands, hundreds of thousands of Guyanese left from the 1968 to 1992. Hundreds of thousands of all walks of life left. And you know, many of them came back, as I mentioned in the program last, last time in 2015 for the 50th anniversary. And those people left on the Burnham. My family left on the Burnham. We were, we were allowed to take 25 US dollars each. I was almost 18 years old when my parents had to leave and we were allowed to take 25 US dollars. Our gold chains were taken away at the airport if we had more than one. Mr. Granger, you're stuck in the 70s. But you know the fact that from 1992 to 2015, the economy grew. You have taken our economies, I showed in the numbers, and I'll bring it back up in a second. But I want you to listen to what Mr. Hunt said on his departure in 2015, when he left as a deputy uh, US uh, official for the United States of America, here is what he said, and I want you to listen to this clip. If 
transformation of the Guyanese economy from 1992 to 2015 was monumental. Um, I think anybody who came to this country, and I've talked to many who were here in 1992 and who came back uh, for, the, for the 50th anniversary celebrations, it's as if they are in a different place entirely. The growth of the private sector must be attributed to the PPP, according to Mr. Hunt. They created macroeconomic stability that, frankly, had been lacking for a very long time in the country. Um, so while we, while, while we all like to focus on what did they do wrong, why did they lose the 15 election, and there's many reasons for it, I think it's also important to remember that there were a large number of things that the, the previous government did correctly, particularly on the economic front. A validation by the senior U.S. official in 2015 that said our economy was the best from 1992 what the PP administration had done to bring it to the level where it was in 2015. And look at where it is in 2019. I want to put up that one slide again just on the numbers. You know, our public debt has went up significantly. I'll get that exact number the next program. The public deposit at the Bank of Guyana went from 10 billion in real cash, people, real cash, to an overdraft of $55 billion in the red. The stock of gold was sold and dropped from 25 billion to under 1 billion today. The nation has lost over 30,000 jobs and they're declining as we speak. We all know, as I mentioned, over 200 new taxes were instituted. And the foreign reserve, which was 665.8 million US dollars in 2015, has lost over 200 million in the last four years. Mr. Granger, where is our money? Why is our economy not moving ahead? What have you done? We know, as we take the slide off, we know you've given yourself pay raises. We know you've taken money out of our pockets. We don't know where you're spending. We know you cut the sugar industry where billions were spent in whether it's subsidies, whether it's looking at the, those markets. What happened to all that money? If you have closed the sugar industry and you should have excess of the subsidies that you said the reason why you closed, where is that money? We now know why the foreign reserves have gone up because we're not making any money on sugar. We're not bringing any money on rice. We know forestry is down 7%. We saw the gold figures. Our economy is really, really tanking. And that is the impact, not on the no-confidence vote, Mr. Granger, Mr. Williams. It's not on the no-confidence vote why our economy is tanked. It's from the fact that when you took power in 2015, you inherited a great economy. You have shown mismanagement, Mr. Granger. You have no vision. You have no understanding of economics. You're a great writer, maybe, of history. You love to, to, your speeches are not articulate. You don't understand how to look at integrating plans to run a country. You have failed the nation, absolutely failed the nation. And in 2019, on September 18, you're now taking the nation in an illegal status once again, as your predecessors had done in the PNC. You've got your attorney general threatening our, the nation for violence if the list is used. When Mr. Lowingfield, the CEO of GCOM, said the list can be used. Some cleanup maybe done. The legal officer of GCOM said house house registration is illegal. Why then do we have to go to the courts again? Why not? For the sake of our nation, follow the law, Mr. Granger. Isn't it embarrassing to you that you're walking around running an, an illegal government? You saw today the President of the United States put the largest economic sanctions on Venezuela, a total embargo of Venezuela because of the, the failure of democracy in Venezuela. Is that what you want for a nation, Mr. Granger? Is that what you are looking forward to? for us to have an economic embargo because we don't have democracy after September 18. It is time that it's a defining moment in our nation's history, a defining moment for all of us as people. 
regardless again of your political convictions. You know, you can have supported Mr. Granger in 2015, barely winning an election. But if you want democracy to continue, if you want your children to see Guyana move to the next level, it is no way you can put a man that holds on to power when every component of the system, from parliament, the highest legislative body in our land, the courts in our system, the Supreme Court through our Chief Justice, the CCJ, the highest body of the legislative that we can go to, said, you are resign, you're out of there, and within the three months time frame, call elections. Mr. Granger, what is it you don't understand? I know your illness doesn't, I hope nothing went wrong with the brain because you continue to fail the nation. You continue to disobey the law of our land and look at what you're inciting. Your attorney general is inciting the fact that if we go to elections without house house registration, we will have violence. We will have whatever happened in the past. And I know what it's like to see some of the destruction in our nation at election time. And I know the people that have done that. I've seen it for myself. For Mr. Williams to use your office and your government to let the nation know that if we don't do what you want, not what the law of the land, the Supreme Constitution says, but what you want, Mr. Granger. Mr. Burnham died 34 years ago. Bless his heart, he, he tried in some ways to do better for Guyana, but he failed the nation also. He took, he nationalized all our, our foreign industries. He tried to see if we can do it all ourselves. We did not have the resources and the population to do it. Hundreds of thousands of us Guyanese left the shores of our country because of Mr. Burnham failed policies. Mr. Granger, stop idolizing Mr. Burnham. Let his soul rest in peace. Today, you made that speech. You can tell that you are lost. You are, you are trying your best to hold on to power that, like Mr. Burnham did for all those decades of rig elections. We cannot afford another rig election in our nation. We cannot afford for, demo afford for democracy to fail. Many have fought over the decades to bring democracy to our nation in 1992. Many of us have fought to ensure we have economic freedom, we have political freedom, we have press freedom, we have freedom of, of our ethnic freedom, our religious freedom. We cannot go back to any one man telling us that he is going to stay in power until he decides what is right and when the time is right. Well, the time based on when you're supposed to come out, Mr. Granger, is September 18. And when you become illegal, because the opposition very clearly would not, they, you had eight months so far to ask for consideration and to follow the rule of law. Do not expect the opposition in any form and, and the international community or any other one to see the opposition go back and justify why you should remain in power after September 18. You need to get out of the office you need to call elections, and that is the only right thing to do. So if you're a PPP member out there or you're an APNU member out there, this has nothing to do with the PPP not going back to Parliament. It's the fact that Mr. Granger sat in the office for an extra eight months, he, and he's now doing whatever it takes to sit for another eight months. If you look at GCOM's schedule and what they're saying is the schedule for elections, it's a, it's a conglomerate of folks coming together to rip the system off, to stay in power. And glad that Mr. Jack Dio nominated Justice Claudette Singh. We're looking forward to a fair review. She knows she said when she took office, she will follow the rule of law. And the rule of law basically said three months of election. They've had eight months worth of, of Diddy Dwaddle, or whatever the term is. 
Mr. Ranger, I, I hope to run into you in the next couple of days. And if I see you, I will look you straight in the eyes and tell you on September 18, you and your government is illegal. You're embarrassing our nation. You have put economic risk at all of us. The numbers have demonstrated our significant decline. The people are suffering. Stealing the PPP manifesto now is not going to help you. Stealing the PPP manifesto points and trying to implement them, Mr. Granger, is not going to help you. You barely won election the last time. You know, we hope that the, the immigrant immigration issue that is circling our nation is fully investigated. We hope, one, we don't have a smuggling act. We hope they're not in the country remaining illegally or registering to vote. All those things are concerned because any one of those things will be a threat to our democracy and the fact that we will go back to the 68th to the 92 era of rigged elections. We cannot afford any flaw in our system. So folks, regardless of your political conviction, it's a defining moment for all of us. We can like, we can love, we can hate the politics. But when you see your young children and you tell them about democracy and you show them where Guyana was in 2015 and how well, as the former ambassador said, Guyana had done from 1992 to 2015, look at where you're at today in 2019. Study whether or not you're better off. Not because of race. I see a lot of people say, well, give Mr. Granger more time. Give him more time for what? We've seen the numbers decline. You've seen him broke the rule of law. You've seen him embarrass our nation. Why would you want a man like that to continue running our country? What would happen 10 years from now, 20 years from now? Same thing that happened in 1992, from 1968 to 1992. Hundreds of thousands of Guyanese of all races, I tell you, of all races, left. When you look at 2015, when the, the 50th anniversary uh, was, or 2016, and you saw the majority of people that came back, that did not come back since 1992, that left on the Burnham, they were all at one time supporters of Burnham. But they left, they couldn't take the economic decline anymore. People continue to leave our shores today because of the economic decline, because of the threat to our democracy. And again, just look across our neighbors, what President Trump did yesterday with the, the embargo uh, with Venezuela. Guyana cannot handle any such measures. And the diplomatic community will be forced to take action after September 18, because even them, if they believe in democracy, if the US, which we know do, we know the British, we know all the, the ABC countries, the European Union believe in true democracy. September 18, democracy is derailed in Guyana unless we have elections. And from that point on, no country in the world that believes in democracy can recognize Mr. Granger as a government. He's resigned, he's a caretaker government right now, but they cannot even recognize him past September 18. And with that comes the consequences. So the dire consequences that Mr. Williams, the Attorney General, is threatening our nation with, he hasn't seen what the dire consequences will be when the international community and people power. Don't forget, we the people have the power to step up, whether it's through general strikes, whether it's through protests, whether it's through our representatives, with the political parties, whether it's through civil society, whether it's through the religious organization, we the people must step up and ensure that democracy is not derailed. And Mr. Granger continues to embarrass our nation, continues to derail democracy, continues to lie to the nation, basically, saying that all these things got to be done, that he's waiting on GCOM to do whatever. Mr. Granger, as we deconstruct you, your caretaker mode is coming to an end. Your watchman mode is coming to an end on September 18. Your government becomes illegal. Our country goes into uncharted waters. 
our economy continue to decline, our people are begging for real economic growth, they're looking forward to the next decade. Ms. Ali has outlined the plans. He's excited to lead the team into election. He's excited to become the next president of Guyana and take our nation to a level once again where we won't see numbers of hundreds of millions of U.S. dollars disappearing in our Federal Reserve or see our gold decline or our public debt goes up. None of that. We want to see back that growth in our economy and we want to have peace in our land, unity, together, we will make Guyana a better place, all of us. And regardless of who you vote for come 2019 election, the commitment by Mr. Ali that says he will be president for all of Guyana, and believe me, his commitment is real, he will ensure, regardless of your vote, and I hope you do vote for him and the PP party, but regardless, Guyana will see a better life in the next decade, and we're all willing to put our hands at the wheel to make it a place where you and I and our children can have that future, that rendezvous with destiny, that opportunity that we believe is necessary, and the, the inheritance that we will receive in the next decade. Thank you for joining me. Look forward to our conversation again on Saturday at 12.30. Join me and we'll have your phone calls then, very open line. And I look forward for us, people power, standing up for democracy, telling Mr. Granger, you're past the stage, it's time for you to call elections and stop threatening our nation with all kinds of other areas that doesn't make sense to us. Get on with calling the elections. Thank you. See you later.